fucking heads in there. Number seven. And number one. She's allowed herself to get wound up by him. Ridiculous, mate, isn't it? Look at us all, look at us all. Can you stand over there, please, fucking muscles? Make them look better. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> They've actually grown. A little bit. What are you saying? 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 Healthy competition between oppos is great. Rivalry is no good. You're there to support each other. The minute you start clashing heads, you're fucked. You see a lot of people on selection and they're awesome soldiers. And then you realise that they're just not team players and it doesn't work, they fall by the wayside. With a planned call in six hours time. Get out of the now! Get fucking moving! The DS want to give the pairs one last chance to prove they deserve a place on the course. You went the wrong way, but okay. Give me your, uh, give me your hand. Stop, 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 stop. When I was growing up, it was tough. I have trust issues, but I've always had that since a kid. I've never trusted anyone, really. There you go, number one. That feeling, like, I want to try and, you know, protect myself. That's what I need to work on. Well, then, straight into it, all the way around. I've never let anyone down. I'm very loyal. Change partners. Fucking hell, Joey. Help yourself. Right, three, two, one, go. Right, that's it. Put your hand on my fucking back. I can't! Do you know how hard this is? It's down on my back. I am. Do not argue between yourselves. Explain to us about the frosty situation with number seven. Uh. I like Lauren, but feel like she is a little bit in competition with me. You feel it's competitive jealousy? Do you think that's? Do you Talk feel to me? Yeah, for sure. I'm a lot more clever than people think. People don't want to believe that because they see. See what they want to see. Yeah. What are you doing here? I'm here really to find out how, how tough I really am. I, be I believe that I'm. I'm quite tough inside. I mean, growing up, it weren't easy. Tell us about your upbringing then. What, what made you tough? I didn't. I weren't academically clever. I think it was because I couldn't focus. Concentrating was a problem and that sort of thing. Yeah. Because it weren't easy growing up. You know what I mean? I had to deal with a lot of shit. What happened? Um, my mum committed suicide when I was 10, which was quite difficult. Yeah, I don't know, I just feel like it sort of hardened me up a little bit, you know, made me, made me like, um, just, I can't really explain it, it's made me a bit tougher inside. Have you accepted it now? Processed it? Well, I just sort of started, like, being, I know it's stupid, but being able to, like, talk about openly, you know what I mean, and saying the word mum and things, like, probably, like, three, four years ago. Like, yeah. probably, yeah. I always ask myself why, like, why does she do that? So it's like, and I know my mum loved me, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. <sighs> Got a trust issue? Yeah, big, big trust issue, yeah. One day she was there, one day she was gone. And I could never, it's like, why? You've done well to actually put it on the table. Yeah. So that's good, you know what I mean? The worst thing you can do is let things fester, because then they just get worse and worse. And the only way you'll get through this whole fucking thing, really, is with other people. God. I 
open the door. And I see my dad kneel down and I remember him just grabbing my head and just, I remember him saying just something along the lines of, mummy's gone. And she's, you know. They were still really didn't understand, you know what I mean? Like, a bit crazy. I was like, well, I just... And I remember just saying to myself, no, no, she can't be gone, she can't be gone. She'll come back, she'll come back. Because why would she leave me? Okay. 